Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Odd food in the West, part two. Odder food. Yeah, that's not it. In part one of Odd Foods, I highlighted organ meats and mentioned how they aren't really odd at all. Just because I wasn't raised eating liver, stomach lining, and kidneys doesn't mean that those parts of an animal are weird. They're usually very nutritious, not to mention inexpensive. A traditional Mexican soup, menudo, no, the food one. Its highlighted ingredient is tripe, but has an amazing mix of spices and it smells heavenly. One day I'll give it a shot. It's not for me. Like today, there were ethnic food markets. Shark fins and other things we consider delicacies were economical foods to some of these cultures. As mentioned in part one, using the whole animal was essential to some settlers' survival. They brought over traditions from their home countries that stuck around, like boiled calf's head, which was served next to its brains mixed with butter. Hmm. Eat it while it's hot! <laughs> Speaking of which, head cheese, pieces of head meat and perhaps some organs, were set in a loaf and bound together in aspic. It's sliced like cold cuts. I've tried it, but it's no Arby's roast beef. Hello? Arby's? You ain't got the meat. I got it over here, I just cooked it. You be wanting the recipe because it'll make you want to do what? The Arby Shuffle. Aspic is interestingly odd in itself. Basically gelatinous goo that comes from cooking down meat and bones and letting it cool. Like soup in jello form. It encased all sorts of proteins and vegetables which also had a preservative effect. Perfect for parties, I'd say. Boiled eels, a popular dish in Europe, could also be found in America, and maybe should have been left. Look out for me, oh muddy water. I came across a cookbook with a not-so-original name called The American Home Cookbook, written in 1864. In it, I was surprised to find very much the same foods as we eat today. Often, they're even prepared the same. I've heard of tomato ketchup and mushroom ketchup, but not walnut ketchup. Apparently, you let walnut skins decay, then strain them into a bunch of spices and cook it for a few hours. This would have been a perfect condiment in parts of the West. Walnuts were easy to harvest and they were cheap. Flour is abundant today, but if you ran out on the frontier, you could use roasted and ground up acorns. Nowadays, it's hip to replace wheat flour with cricket flour for more nutritional value. It surprised me to find that in 19th century America, insects as a food source were common. I'll bet a lot of you folks don't believe that. Shoshone and Paiute tribes had some pretty major harvesting practices where they would dig trenches and pits to capture grasshoppers for roasting and flour making. When Native Americans traded with the wagon trains, insect fruitcake was on the list. Although they didn't like the idea at first, the settlers chowed down on them. Good. I don't know what the recipe is, but this is good. Hey, life on the immigrant trail is rough. If you're out of protein sources, you could starve or eat bugs. You had to choose the lesser of two weevils. <laughs> In the 1870s, entomologist Charles Valentine Riley developed some recipes for farmers struggling with locusts devastating their crops. Eat the thing that ruined you? Hmm, could be satisfying. Once you get past the leg, it ain't too bad. During the Civil War, coffee was not always abundant. Substitutes included sweet potatoes, rye, different nuts, seeds, and roots. Pretty much anything that could be roasted and ground up was probably tried. Remember, there were settlers out west at that point, so they were probably trying some of these weird concoctions too. Keep in mind that the success of the Transcontinental Railroad changed everything. Variety, abundance, and getting food before it could spoil really helped settlers stay, uh, settled. So, 
In essence, odd food isn't really that odd. We still eat a lot of these foods today. It's just not mainstream cuisine. Some stuff is worth trying, if anything, just to say you did it. All right, as I said, trying something new, we have grasshoppers. We're gonna just be like our old Westians. Westians. And we're gonna have some grasshoppers. Pew pew! Pew! Pew pew! I don't know, I don't know if I can. Let's just do it, come on. Okay. Let's go. You grab your own, really. I think you should choose your own. All right, this looks okay. good. Does it? Yeah. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Just stop it. Okay, ready? Stop On three? It, baby. One, two, two three. Sustainable food source. You're right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't like them? Oh no. Okay. Oh. Moving on. <laughs> Grasshoppers are nutty tasting. I think psychology played a big part in this. Seeing a head, thorax, and abdomen, and knowing I'm about to eat it really impacted the experience. Also, the texture is a little off-putting. So, Mrs. Santee and I won't be replacing Funyuns with grasshoppers in the foreseeable future. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank the folks here at the Old Time Cafe for letting me shoot here today and for feeding us some good food. As always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Pew pew. Is this sultry pew pew? Pew pew. I'd like to faint a little. Oh, that one's not gonna see you on down the trail. Mm -mm. Oh. The old one, Siri? Oh. Dear Lord, that was horrible. Mm.